Hi everyone, I'm Josh and welcome to the VIP Masterclass series. Today's episode is dedicated to both Roger and Susan who had questions about the Schubert Impromptu Opus 90 number no. 3 and Susan also had um, questions about Chopin Etude Opus 25 number no. 1 so we'll dig right into those. Roger's email was quite short. It said, I apologize if I bomb you by email. As I wrote earlier, I practice Schubert Opus 90 number no. 3. My problems are balance and voicing in the right hand. Have You've already mentioned this in previous videos but maybe you can make some general tips when practicing this piece. And uh, Roger's from Sweden, and we had the opportunity to go there in May um, as a family, and it is a gorgeous country. So, Roger, fun to visit your hometown there. And then uh, Susan asked uh, the following. She said, Hi, Josh. I'm submitting another VIP question. I know you had a short lesson on Etude Opus 25 number 1 on YouTube, but I wanted to get some more detailed input on how to maximize possible fingerings and wrist movements to avoid tension while playing this piece. I have existing pain in my fourth and fifth fingers from potential tendonitis, uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, which I'm actually not familiar with what thoracic outlet syndrome is. I'll have to do some studying on that. And any continuous extension of the fifth fingers without pulling them back into the normal closed hand position triggers pain. Uh, I am preparing this piece along with Schubert Impromptu Opus 90 number no. 3, which requires even more fifth finger stretches. I was taught by my teacher to, whenever possible, as soon as a stretch is finished, to bring back to the closed hand position as much as possible. But it seems difficult, if not impossible, to do that in a piece like the Schubert Impromptu. So I think there's a little bit of a uh, problem there, Susan, because you say, you're saying when you bring it back in, it, it causes pain, but that's actually when you're relaxing. So. Um, I'll do my best. I, I hope that I can help today. Uh, is there a technique that I can use to make the stretched out position as comfortable as possible? So let's just dig right into the Schubert since both of them had questions about this. <clears throat> one of the most beautiful pieces ever. I've never performed it, but I've taught it so much that I feel like I know it. Um, so, and uh, Christian Zimmerman has one of the most beautiful recordings out there along with Murray Pariah. And there are many, many others, but those are just, uh, Murray Pariah's kind of captured my heart with um, his Schubert playing. Uh, I, I think he's one of the finest Schubert players. I also enjoy Mitsuko Uchida's Schubert as well as Wilhelm Kempf's Schubert and Radu Lupu. Um, and then, of course, Babayan and Trifonov. Anytime you can hear them play anything, they'll, they'll always be a treat to hear. So here's a little bit of the Schubert. We'll just go to there because there's a lot of things that can be discussed about the piece. Okay, so Roger had asked for general tips and Susan had asked for the most comfortable ways to have outstretched fingers. Okay, Susan, so the first thing I want to tell you um, and Roger, because uh, Roger, we're, every tip in this video is for you and then some specifics for Susan's question. If Susan, if you hold your hand to your side, um, now I can't speak for you, but I'm guessing that, that may not be painful. It's probably the movement um, that's painful, so of going in and out. So you had said when you collapse back in, my guess is that you may be either the extension that you said causes the pain and then the pulling back um, <clears throat> is it, that's causing the problems. We want to minimize that, but we want to stay as relaxed as possible. And we'll also do some demonstrating with the uh, Opus 25 number one. I completely agree with your teacher. Anytime possible, I want you to um, collapse the hand back in. That's something, that's an invaluable tip for everybody in the group. I want to demonstrate with La Campanella since we've had a few requests in the group for this. Um, a practice method that you can do, I was teaching at uh, Castle Rock Music Camp, just this little music camp down in St. George, Utah, last week, uh, last Thursday and Friday, and um, there was a kid that was having trouble with uh, Mozart Sonata. Um Uh, K331, uh, third movement, the Rondo a la Turca, as it's often put um, or called. And he was doing, which is a super 
norm, uh, you know, very normal problem to have. And then additionally, I got an email yesterday from someone who had purchased my pro practice of La Campanella, and he said, do you mind... <clears throat> just looking at this, you know, the first page and see how I'm doing. I've been practicing it for a year now with all of your tips. Um, and he it was very clean and accurate and pretty relaxed. What I noticed that he was doing a little bit of though is... Now, if you dissect that, what he's doing is he's jumping a little bit too fast from here to here. Okay, so I came up with a little exercise at the camp where I made the kid touch his fingers every time he stretched in in the new positions. So I made him relax in each finger, in other words. So if you're doing... Okay, we're going to go here. We're going to touch all our fingers together and then stretch out and then collapse the hand in. And then stretch and then touch. Stretch, touch. So it's kind of like a squid. Now, that is not practical. You're never going to do that. But Susan, what I would love for you to do to try to minimize that pain is touch all your fingers together here. Okay, now stretch down to the B. And now pull the hand in to this position. And you could even do the one, two, four, or one, two, three, whatever you're doing. Um, I guess you could do any of them. I never considered it, but I guess if it's more comfortable for your hand, you could do five, one, two, five, two, one. That may work. That might keep your hand a bit more relaxed because you're not going to be outstretched this whole time and causing that pain. Additionally, Susan, I want you to go watch my YouTube video uh, about tendonitis, um, hot cold therapy, as well as just getting a little like $25, $30 electrode um, off of Amazon. Um, and then massaging it each day in that hot cold therapy. Get a bucket of ice and then a bucket of hot water and then just go back and forth for 30 seconds. I, and, and applying these new tips as well should help to get rid of that tendonitis to a degree. I, I can't make any guarantees because I don't know if you have a genetic condition or anything, but if it was simply due to stress from piano, these methods will help you tremendously. Okay, so again, Let's let's say that you're using the more outstretched fingering because we're gonna have to do that in the Chopin. So five, one, two, three, two, one. Notice my four and five are just kind of hanging out here. They're not stretching or extending right there. Um, okay, and I'm I'm going to try to minimize that motion, but I'm going to. Uh, at each moment, try to relax. And a good method is what I uh, describe in my YouTube video called Free Hands Part Two, which is where you shake each finger, okay, until that just feels limp. What you're doing here is you're getting out of positions and you're kind of collapsing like your teacher ha has said to do. Because even if you, like I, when I say collapse that position and touch your fingers, that's like an extreme example. When you're actually playing. <laughs> professionals make it look like their hand is completely still. They just go. But actually what's going on is a lot of practice beforehand of relaxing that. So even though it looks like I'm not moving a lot, my hand is quite relaxed. I hope this is making sense. So what we want to do is we don't want to, we want to practice the collapsing, the touching the fingers. And I mean, I think that's worth the entire video in value, to be completely honest, because that just kind of came to me at the camp, but it embodies advice that I've given my students over many, many years of kind of rotating down. And that's also what you can do is in La Campanella is kind of rotate that way and then rotate this way. I was also doing that with uh, my New York student yesterday. He was asking about La Campanella and he, um, we went over that same rotation. So you could even do this a little bit, uh, Roger and Susan, is just kind of collapse your hand in right there and then rotate down to here a little bit without accenting it. And then rotate up Rotate up, rotate up, rotate, rotate. And, and what you can do is you can kind of rotate up for your melody notes. That will help with the voicing. 
Now here you can have these little circular motions. I like adding a little extra movement because it's so easy to go and have your fingers completely turn into a claw and tighten into like a statue like that. Um, you don't want that. You want to go kind of rotate into there and then release.